Welcome, this is where nerds come to learn things. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. We have some damage here. Front panel was smashed. That's not a good sign. Oh dear. I'm probably glued back together along with bits of there. Does that mean it's had a frontal impact? We know it's packed quite well. Yeah, a lot of padding on the front there. Protect the front panel. Yeah, look at that. It's been broken in shipping. Despite the good packaging. That whole front panel was knackered. That's concerning. Let's power it up and see if it actually still has a display and stuff like that. I guess we've got a jigsaw puzzle of plastic pieces to sort out. If I can glue it back together, it'll be alright. Okay, we're powering. Got it set to 110 volts. See if it'll power up. Well, the display's not broken or something. Okay. Output is working. Yep, that's working. Channel 2, high range, is also working. Because there's a readback feature, if you've got a voltage on here, you know it's working. But yeah, this front panel was like mounted. That's a shame. Okay, so before I open this thing up, to change the voltage so I set a 240 volt, since it's all broken as well. I'm going to chuck up a load tester here and just make sure it actually tells the load and that sort of stuff and it actually is functioning. Because if it isn't electrically functioning, I could maybe make a claim with, with eBay and stuff and say, look, it's damaged in transit and it's not working. But if it's just damaged my panel, then you know, so be it. It doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter, but I've already found a new one on eBay. I've already purchased a new panel. I was lucky there's one there, so I've already got a new front panel coming for it. So that was at least good, and it wasn't that expensive for a change. It's only the, the actual bezel itself, not the whole assembly with a display and everything as well. Just a just bezel. And that's the only bit that's broken, at least it seems to be that way. So, let's power this up and see what happens. Try and shove this back so I can push the buttons. So there is airflow, so we're on channel 1, we'll put it on high range straight away, and we'll increase its output, 3 volts is on here, that's fine. So you go up to 20 volts, it does. Okay, so it's supposed to be able to do, at 20 volts, 1.5 amps, that's what it's rated to. So if I go on current set, I'll do 1.2 amps, or something, 1.3 amps, let's do that, 1.3 amps, and then we turn the load on. I should be able to handle that. And yep, yeah, it is 1.3 amps. Go on, set, let's go 1.4, 1.45. So, yep, yeah, it's actually also fairly accurate, so it's looking good. Happy with that. So, let's change to the second channel. Channel 2. Put on high range as well. One voltage up. That's going up on the load as well. And they're actually agreeing voltage wise. So this obviously needs calibrating. That's not a big deal. It's very easy to do. Let's uh, turn the load on. Same current at 1.45, 1.45. So they're really close. It just needs calibration. And so that's, that's easy to do. It's not a problem at all. I think I covered it previously in another video. So electrically, it seems to be working okay. Obviously not completely maxing out, but it's close. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It seems to function. I don't mind so much opening it up to change the voltages on it now. So we'll do that now, we'll open it up. So to get anything apart, it's actually fairly straightforward. Two screws each side. Then you've got the case screws you've got to take out as well. This is currently sealed by the person who sold it, but uh, well, you know, <laughs> the seal doesn't actually cover the front panel. I thought you taken the casing off, which is a shame because I need to get in here to change the voltages. So here we have some more bits of plastic to try and deal with. So there's a front panel off. There's a connector one here which we'll unplug and we'll have a close look at it. Alright. 
and there's that side panel. Uh, certainly it's a jigsaw. So it seems to be purely the front panel damage. It's a shame because it was actually really nice condition before that. So let's slide this panel off. These ones are Torx, so that is a Torx 15. So, there's the voltage sections just down there. So that's what we change our switches around. So the back switch is towards the back and the front switch is towards the front. To get 230 volts, I have to move them both towards the centre. So, one that way, and the other one that way. So that's the voltage change done. I might have an update on this thing. I've been gluing it all back together. <laughs> it's not wonderful. But it's intact apart from one little gap just over here. I'm hoping the pieces around here somewhere, maybe in the packaging, I haven't found it yet. But I basically got it back together, so I'm fairly happy with that, apart from that one little piece. So I've been working with that, and hopefully it uh, it doesn't fall apart. Now, the next thing I've been doing is I noticed that whilst I had it apart, this is the display, obviously, and this encoder here it should be indented. And I can't feel any indents. So I'm thinking, well, this encoder probably needs some work done to it anyway. So whilst I've got it apart, I thought, oh, I might as well do this. Because I didn't show this before. Okay, so here's the encoder. Now what I've done, I've already folded this side out. We've got those two fingers here which are folded out. I've got these two this side I have to fold out as well. It's going to use these rubbishy tweezers because they're nice and sharp and go underneath there. And then you're bending straight anyway. Now. One more finger. Oh, I might bend it on a bit too much. There's gunk, lots of gunk on there. Okay, bend that finger out. Okay, now this will just lift off. Like so, and that's what the inside looks like. And here's the inside of this piece. So it's just encoder. So as you turn it, it just goes around those notches. Pretty simple thing. Now on the outside there, that's actually like a step. You know, I'll turn it sideways a little bit and maybe you see. It's like a cog. Steps in. Maybe you can see it, I don't know. But um, so that's so when you're turning it, it will indent. And you can feel it indenting. Now, the issue with these is that these little fingers inside here, they get weak. So if I turn on this side, maybe you'll see it slightly better. So you've got these little fingers in here, which are the actual contacts. And this one here is for the indentation. All right, so that is actually like popped right down. So what I suggest doing is, whilst the front panel's apart, is just very gently get in here and lift these up a little bit to increase the tension. Because they get old and they... Um, lose tension. So let's just pop this up slightly. Again, you don't want it too much. You just want to make sure that it's still in alignment and just slightly higher than it was before. All right. Because these encoders can play up and they get a bit older. And uh, to ensure that it behaves. 
you just need to pull them up a little bit, increase the tension, and I'll keep it going for a few more years. Now, this is the indent one here, the indentation one, and that is just sitting right down right now. Just change hands, and that's just sitting right down. It's like no tension at all on that, so let's pop this up. quite a bit. Okay, give plenty of tension. So now when I put this back on it's actually got indents on it. You can see it popping into, into the indents. Maybe you can see it. Alright, so that's what that side one there does. Okay, I'm just going to double check these contacts because I did bend them, so I'm going to make sure they're not like, bent sideways and touching, because that's not what we want. It's entirely possible I bent it sideways slightly. I think that's alright. So now we've got nice tension on there, so we can put it back together. Now I could give it a clean, but I think it looks alright, it doesn't really look dirty, so I'm just going to reassemble it. I've actually, when I tested this out it seemed to be working but I'm just doing this as preventative because I knew that that tensioner was not really working so let's pop this back over. Yeah. Let's turn the other side. Now I've got to try and clamp these down a bit harder. push it over and roll it to clamp it down. Alright, done. So that's that part there. That's as good as new now. See it actually indents now. Excellent. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to put this display to one side and uh, be really careful with it because these things uh, tend to break very easily if you're not careful with them. So I managed to find the little piece that was missing. It was inside the box. So that is now, you can just barely see where it was, that's installed as well now. So the thing is complete. I think there's only a couple of little like, bits like this which are missing. But it's good. Now it's going to have to let the glue go off. You're not going to think about putting it back together. Alright, so as you can see, I've put it back together. Circuit board's in there. Reattached all that. Just going to put the knob back on. And uh, it can now go back onto the unit. It's not too bad because I think it's completely smashed before. It looks alright. So you've got to reattach it to this. So let's put the flex in. These screws are not doing it too tight because this was all fractured around these screw holes. I might fracture again if I do them too much. Too much. Just so it grips this very slightly, that's it. Now things powered up, just double check, make sure it actually works again. Don't 
to the power. Yeah, cool. Display's working. It's all looking fine. Nice. So we're going to reassemble it and hopefully the glue holds. Right. we're done. It's fixed. Could have done without that disaster, but never mind. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. If you're not already subscribed, share the video, have a chat in the comments, give us a feedback. Might do some more of these things. Might buy more of these and see how we go. They're fairly easy things to work on.